What's up, guys? Um, I'm not going to do this big old long intro. You know who I am. You've known who I am since, you know, 2002, damn near before, I dare say. Um, you've been following the drama for the last few days, and um, I finally talked to the... Po well, I attempted to talk to one of the parties involved, and did talk to the other party involved, and... The third party involved in causing all this drama uh, came to me via via Facebook message. Like, okay. The last time I checked, we're all grown-ups. They're doing these shows and living together and doing things like this. And for one grown-up to post on another grown-up's wall something that a third grown-up said, out of context, the fact that my roommate, who has become my best friend in recent months, said something that was taken completely out of context, and not meant to be insulting or derogative or whatever, it was simply a statement of opinion. And you know what? We've been watching the XMVs, Jay and I, or at least I have, and while Mike and I do have this rapport that always seems to come out together, at the end of the day, I had to get loaded, shout out to Ron White, to deal with being around him. Because for four years, excuse me, yeah, for four years, all I had to deal with was beratement and bullying and things like that from him, and I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. The only reason that XMV was done this year is because Aaron saw how successful Dads has become. We have a sponsor, Long Beach Clothing Company. We have people wanting to have us at their parties. We go to nationals once a month and party with our fans. We go out to events and we get noticed, we get recognized. Granted, I get recognized because of talk wrestling also, there's no doubt about that. But JJ's getting his own share of fame too, and I love it. And the only reason Dad's started in the first place is because I went to Aaron Riff with the idea of bringing in a co-host, not Mike, because I was done dealing with Mike and his drama and his garbage. Granted, he moved to Utah, and it wasn't an issue. He was gone. But I knew if I came, the, I came with him, came to him, excuse me, with the idea for a co-host, he would instantly think, Mike, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to try something different. And he said no. He didn't want JJ involved. He and Mike and everybody else in that group, including the person who I will commend in this matter, Noah Donish, who came to me first via text and tried to resolve this issue, so I commend you for that, Noah. But at the end of the day, brother, not your fight. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you saying that we all love each other, but this is not the case anymore. This is not love anymore. This is ridiculous drama, petty high school crap. But thank you to Noah for trying. But every single person on that side of the grand fight that has played out over Facebook over the last few days has vilified JJ for something that happened last year at the post-SummerSlam party. You all were there. You all saw what really happened. The server at this restaurant said one thing and meant another. JJ and his woman and their table stood up for principle and did what they felt was right. Doesn't matter if you think it's right. Doesn't matter if I think it's right. They felt it was right. I side with them in that. Because when I hear a, a server at a restaurant saying, your food, your, your order is taken care of, that leads me to believe you're, you're comped. Whatever you want to call it. Okay? The server at this restaurant, I'm not going to call him out by name because I still eat there, made a mistake. And the manager tried to back her up and he was wrong too. 
But over the course of the year, I, I was told via text by Aaron today that I've held my tongue and didn't say anything until JJ made this XMV comment. All JJ said was his opinion, which he feels that the shows that we taped up at Staples Center are better than the XMVs that have played out over the last 20 or so. They're going to be played out over 23 days. I sat there for those 23 episodes of XMV that Mike and I taped. They weren't pretty, guys. And it was not fun. And being drunk afterwards and being hung over and dealing with my woman when I got home wasn't fun either. Okay? Drunk in Vegas was fun. This was my bachelor party. We damn near got some hookers. That was fun. Didn't happen because they were too costly for what they for what we had. I'm so sick of Facebook being used as an outlet for ignorant people to get their feelings out. Not one time until I went to them first did they come to me with their gripe. Mike created a fake account and emailed me with a threat of, we will meet face to face. I hope you're grown up by then. Dude, I blocked you for a reason. You're posting on people's walls and calling people names. I didn't want to deal with that. I blocked Aaron and Beth because Aaron stirred the pot and Beth helped out. I saw the posts, regardless if they're deleted now, I can't see them, but I know what I saw. I'm not stupid. The three of you together have got it in your head that JJ was jealous of XMV. Let me clarify one more time to the public. Another shout out to Ron White. The SummerSlam retrospectives from JJ and I were in the thought process in February when we take our WrestleMania retrospectives. Aaron did not come to me about bringing XMV back and bringing Mike and I back together until after that. It is ridiculous that this has played out like this. It is childish. It is stupid. I have allowed myself to go on there and respond back and be juvenile just like them, and I'm done with it. I am no longer speaking to any of the three of them. And as of this moment, right now, when you all see this video and when I tape this video, this is the end of Talk Wrestling HD, whatever you want to call it. There will be no more episodes taped by Aaron Rift starring Jeff Meacham. If you want to see me, you have to come to this channel. If you want to see JJ and me, you have to come to this channel. I'm sure Aaron will find a way to coerce Mike to come back once in a while and try to make another Mike Nagel solo show successful, and we all saw how well that went a few years ago. I am not asking my friends or my family or anybody else to take sides. I don't care. You want to be their friend? Fine. You want to be my friend? Fine. You don't? Fine too. I don't care. I got plenty of friends. I got plenty of roommates. I got plenty of people that actually show me an inkling of respect. And over the last few days, I've been shown none from a person that I genuinely considered a friend and another person that, quite frankly, never showed me respect and bailed me out of a situation a grand total of one time. And he brought that up in the letter he sent to me. How he saved my butt at XPW. XPW was eight years ago. I don't care anymore. The dude that threatened my life is out of the business now. Who gives a shit? And now you're going to come threaten me? You know I'm going to be... Everybody knows where we're going to be August 13th and 14th. It's a very small little window between... The end of Chick Hearn Court and the downtown Hooters. I am a fat ginger in wrestling gear. 
wrestling clothes. Excuse me, I'm not going to be wrestling here. That's just ugly. I'm a fat ginger in wrestling clothes. Not that hard to find. If you have a problem with me, take it up with me in person, and I will give you my answer. But as far as the internet goes, the end of talk wrestling is at hand, and there will be a new solo show starring Jeff Meacham very, very soon.